Welcome back to the Golf and Filter podcast here. As we mentioned in the introduction, my name is Adam. You know me uh, from golfandfilter.com. And joining me today for the first time is Mr. Sean Foley. He is the founder of Rain or Shine Golf. Sean, it's so nice to speak with you today. Good to be with you, uh, with you as well. I'm looking forward to talking to you. So uh, I've got so many questions about indoor golf simulator setup. And listeners and followers of uh, us on Golf Unfiltered know what I'm talking about. I've had some uh, some issues. Uh, but before we get into all of that, uh, why don't you let us know a little bit about your background, Sean, as well as uh, how you came up with the idea of Rain or Shine Golf. You got it. Yeah, my business partner and I started the company back in 2016. Uh, the idea honestly came from just a love for simulation in terms of the way I grew up. I grew up in Wisconsin, so I had to find something to do for yeah. the dreary six months of winter that we were faced with just about every year. So I always just had a love for them. I, I wasn't in a position to have one in the house. Um, ended up going to uh, play golf uh, in, at the collegiate level and you know, was lucky enough to have a few few simulation units within our practice facility and that's really when I got uh, got the itch to really get into this further um, and I did go into the corporate world for a little mm -hmm. bit personally just for a few years and learned a lot along the way a lot of things that I learned was you know ways that I don't want to grow my own company mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh, my partner and I definitely you know we learned some lessons and, and really took some things to heart for not only what we want to do for our customer base, just being the golf fanatics that they are, but also our team and our employees. And, you know, we're trying to grow a culture that we would really want to be a part of ourselves. We're trying to grow a culture with our customer base that we would really want to be a part of and um, kind of just use that philosophy for everything we do here. Uh, so, like I said, back in 2016, we started and, uh, it's hard to believe it's been almost five years. It's been a blur sometimes, but uh, loved every minute of it. I mean, uh, indoor golf simulators is something that, especially over the last 12 months or so, have been just a premium and so vitally needed. And you're talking to a fellow Midwesterner. I, li I live in the Chicagoland area, as listeners to this know, so I feel your pain, you know, only having a few yeah. months out of the year to play some golf. And the idea of getting customers to your, uh, as you were saying, getting customers to understand that this was an option for them, regardless, if I understand correctly, the main message behind rain or shine is regardless of whatever situation you may find yourself in, you can make something work. Is, is that about right? Absolutely. Uh, lots of various spaces that we can accommodate a lot of different budgets. Um, you know, it's, it's, perceived a lot of times as an extremely expensive product it is don't get me wrong but sure. it doesn't have to be you know you don't have to have a full-blown setup it can just be be a net with a little piece of technology that can help you get some information and we have a lot of people start that way that's honestly the majority of how people start so um, yeah, i mentioned spacing as well is a big one but there's there's so many different ways to do it uh, we really fight that misconception of price points of the amount of space required um, but really we're just trying to provide as many people out there as possible access to golf when they want it regardless of weather regardless of time crunch regardless of commutes uh, we're just trying to to grow this game so as i mentioned earlier uh, i tried to do something like this myself and whenever i try to do something myself you know, if my wife were listening to this, she would just roll her eyes and kind of smile because, you know, I just try to piece some <laughs> things together. But one of the, the biggest challenges that I had, and I'm sure a few listeners relate to this, I live in a very old home. It's like 93 years old or something like that. And I don't have very high ceilings in my basement, which is where I had, I ended up purchasing a net. I think I got it off of Amazon. Um, I was able to review a very nice, um, uh, a piece of turf uh, hitting mat. And, you know, through what we do here at Golf and Filtered, I also had uh, a couple pieces of technology that I could use to get some information, like you said. If I'm understanding correctly, that is really kind of like an entry point that Rain or Shine Golf can also help with. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, some sort of technology to read some ball flight, uh, give you at least preliminary information 
uh, you can get in for a few hundred bucks and obviously the accuracy goes up as the price goes up uh, most of the time. But as, as the space is really built out, I always like to say you just need something to hit off of and to hit into. Obviously, it needs to be safe. Uh, you need to feel comfortable swinging in the area. But that's all you really need is something to read that ball flight and then something to hit off of and into. And you, know, you can get started. There's obviously some pretty cool things that can be done the more elaborate the build out gets mm-hmm. as you introduce projection, um, software, course play, and, and things of that nature. But it, it doesn't take a ton to get started. And you know, it, it can just be something as simple as what you mentioned. And from my understanding, you have a pretty uh, interesting origin story yourself regarding how uh, there was a, if I remember right, there was a uh, a flood at your your childhood home or something of That's that nature right. in the yeah. basement, <laughs> and and maybe talk a little bit about how that kind of like you made that work for you. Yeah, so gosh, this was back in right about the middle of high school, so I was about sixteen years old, and as you know from the Midwest, basements flood quite often, mm-hmm. and you know we were the sump pump kicked in and it didn't do its job. So had some flooding and had to rip up all the carpet in the basement. Mm -hmm. And I was able to talk my dad into at that time, putting in some sort of putting green, uh, had always wanted that just to, you know, practice up in the winter time and, and have putting contests, things like that. So what we actually did was build out, there was some sort of flooding subfloor surface. It was a plastic material that was hollow. Mm-hmm. Um, and that sat on t- with plywood on top of it. So instead of covering that anti-flood flooring mm-hmm. with a, a carpet, we kind of defeated the purpose and just drilled a four-inch four inch hole <laughs> right into <laughs> the subfloor and laid the turf over the top and made a little home putting green. So, yeah, that was honestly when uh, my partner Zach and I started the business, we... It had simulation on the radar too, but putting mm-hmm. greens was really the first product that we started with. Um, mostly just due to some, some complications of, of getting started with simulation. But mm-hmm. that was really what, you know, the origin story was of, of indoor golf and trying to bring at least putting into homes first. And then we eventually evolved into full on simulation. See, and, and I'm glad that you went, you went into that story because that's an example of, you know, we talked about entry point a little bit ago. It's mm-hmm. not just simulation. You can do something like a putting green in your house, a chipping green, for crying out loud. I mean, I've got friends that were oh, chipping yeah. into their into their couches uh, during, during quarantine. Whatever it, you need to do to make it work, because as you just, you know, illustrated in your story, sometimes unexpected things happen, but we can make the best out of it. And really, golfers find a way, don't they? They always find a way. That's right. That's right. I can't tell you how many chip shots growing up I hit into the couch, um, <laughs> how many near bladed wedges made their way into the fireplace. And it never broke, never broke the glass, but <laughs> I know what you mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, you had mentioned that you guys started the company. You ran into a, you know some complications, perhaps getting into simulation. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of just intangible things, logistics that perhaps as I hit my microphone stand, as uh, some people might not understand that ne- that goes into setting up not only a business, but one to say, hey, you can actually set up a home golf simulator or something like that for yourself. I mean, maybe talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you face as your company began to grow. Yeah, for sure. And honestly, you know, Zach and I at the time were just kind of figuring out what we were doing at the same time. So as we were trying to train ourselves in the entrepreneurial world and, and get used to that, um, I still worked full time for the first six months of the business. So there's there's obviously very limited time sure. for myself as well. Um, but as we went along and once I fully committed myself to the business too, we were able to go down that road. Honestly, we just, we wanted to learn more about the products before just throwing this out into the world. Um, we wanted to make sure we understood what we were selling and we're being authentic with the information provided and the solutions we were providing. Um, 
so it, it took about six months to really feel comfortable at that that level of service. Uh, but we just wanted to make sure we were in the right spot from a service standpoint and we're able to, you know, kind of practice what we preach. So we should also clarify to, you know, listeners, you can go out to uh, rain or shine golf.com to uh, take a look at the website and all the different services, uh, Sean, that you, you offer. We're not just talking about indoors either, right? Like you can actually help set up solutions if people want to keep it outside. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A number of our, uh, the technology partners that we work with, there's, the majority of them do work outside as well. Um, you know, obviously when you're dealing with some electronics, like a projector, you want to be careful with that and have some coverings in place. But, um, if you're, if you're using a launch monitor and a net, for example, just about every time you can put that out in the backyard, you can throw it in your golf bag and bring it to the range. Um, you can put it inside as well. It, it does, it does definitely go, go both ways with that. Uh, we certainly, really market heavily towards the full on indoor simulation. Um, you know, that what you would see as a prototypical man cave, so to speak. Sure. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of different solutions out there that can be brought outside as well. So when you talk about the different package options with your clients, people who are interested, maybe they don't necessarily know what they, they want, but they provide you, I would imagine, the starting point of these are, this is the space that I have to work with. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, exactly. So square one. So we usually figure out what does the room look like? Is it, you know, sometimes it's a new build. They're building a home or they're just renovating or adding an extension to the home. Um, So what does the space look like that would be dedicated to whatever type of golf Mm -hmm. is, is in play? Um, Number two, once we kind of figure out the options there, we'll usually knock a few options off of the list based on some limitations. Uh, We'll obviously get into any budget expectations. And those budget expectations are mostly driven by the level of technology that the consumer is interested in. So we offer a few in-house product labels um, for the impact screen, for the turf, and uh, for a lot of the surrounding hitting area. And then we work with technology partners to make that, you know, that, that ball data happen and that software experience happen. Um, so a lot of our hitting area being the turf and the impact screens are, are pretty uniform across the board, a few different size options there, but a majority of that, that experience we're providing is fitting the customer into the right technology experience. And we'll get into, are, are they looking to practice and play, just practice, really just play um, and fit into the proper software? Uh, we'll get into what type of metrics they're interested in. If they don't care about backspin, um, we can obviously fit into something that's a lot more reasonable in price. Uh, so a lot of different factors involved, but uh, we really have a solution for, for just about anything they'd be looking for. And you do work with all the major pieces of technology that I'm sure most listeners have heard about. Yeah. You know, Skytrack, Foresight, and the likes. Yes, yes, absolutely. And um, those relationships are really, really crucial to us. So that we, we're in very close relationship just so we know any advancements in the technology, any advancements in the software. Uh, we have every single one of the units on our website in our showroom here in Charlotte. So our staff can use them can become experts in them themselves and, you know, really try to do the best we can to offer that solution to the customer as well. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. And the fact that you have the showroom Mm -hmm. where people can come in and take a look, you know, perhaps, you know, like myself, I didn't necessarily know what I could work with and, you know, you should see me down there. It's I'm, I'm, my punch out game is going to be incredible because I I can't take a full (laughs) back swing. But, you know, you make it work. Max one game. <laughs> That's all it is, man. That's all it is. And, you know, even if it's just a matter of, you know, with chipping and doing that or anything like that. Um, you know, it's interesting, too, is when people start thinking about this particular, uh, you know, perk that they want to bring to their own home. You know, they don't necessarily maybe think long term. So what does Rain or Shine Golf do? Uh, you had mentioned a couple things like technology advancement. Perhaps there's an upgrade 
to software or something like that? Do you maintain that level of communication with the customer? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it's definitely not just a one-time sale. Um, a lot of times we'll have a customer start from square one, like you mentioned, where you're just dealing with a net and a piece of turf. Um, sometimes they don't even get involved in the launch monitor right away. So, you know, whether it be for every customer, we're here for them. It's it's not. But if every single customer out there is starting that way and they want to end up with the best of the best golf simulator in their home with a high quality projector, a great computer to run it on and, um, you know, a full suite, so to speak, we're there to just hold their hand every step of the way. And uh, when the time comes to make any upgrades along the way, we'll be be there to answer any questions. Um, we're certainly not aggressive because everybody has their own timelines with that. And mm-hmm. some people just aren't interested in going that far down the road. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, we, we do have a pretty significant repeating customer rate just as people build out over time and add little, little nuts and bolts to, to their setup and, uh, kind of build it out over time. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And that's just such an important part of just keeping in touch with people and making sure that, you know, this is a significant investment it, or it can be, uh, depending right. on what package they go through. Um, and that's, that's great to have that continuous support. And obviously in 2020, everyone talked about the golf boom. I mean, it was just incredible with businesses across the board in the golf industry that just absolutely exploded, so to speak. How did that impact? How did 2020 impact Ringer Shine? It was it was wild <laughs> in, in a number of different ways. So a- anytime I bring up this topic, um, you know, we're certainly very blessed to see the year that we had over the last year. Um, I definitely feel for a lot of business owners out there and mm-hmm. see the tremendous challenges that were faced. And I hope that everybody makes it out okay. Um, it was it was a whirlwind of a year and, you know, we were very blessed to have very high levels of demand. Um, we saw we more than doubled our revenue over the last year. Wow. Um, but I can't sit here and say that it was all, you know, all sunshine because it was, it was certainly quite a bit of headaches, especially with the supply chain environment. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a number of times and we're still facing it to this day. It was, you know, managing back order queues within some of our top products. And you're seeing that across the board in a number of different industries. The supply chain environment, especially in technology and with some microchips is really, really challenging right now. Mm -hmm. And we're still fighting through it. We're trying to service our customers the best we possibly can. But at the end of the day, people just want this experience. You know, there's there's some customer experiences that have been to the level we're, we're not very happy with. At the end of the day, people just want what they've paid for and they want to be able to have fun and uh, having to wait's no fun. So <laughs> we're just, just trying to manage that over time. And, you know, we're, we're very lucky to, to have the level of demand we had and we're just working through a dwindling supply headache, but it's still there. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a, a double edged sword there though. Sure. Yeah, the supply chain definitely impacted many different brands, not, o- not only in the golf industry, as you point out, but, but others as well. Uh, you raised uh, uh, an interesting point there and something I hadn't considered before. For a technical situation or customer service you know, question, you work with a lot of different brands. You partner with a lot of different brands. Now, do they go straight through you or do you direct them to the particular brand in question or how does that work? Oh, we have a we have a staff of twelve with um, sales and customer service support. So we take everything. Uh, we're the front lines communication for anything and everything needed. Um, on the very rare occasion, you know, there may be a situation where access to a software, for example, we might need to refer out. But we can handle just about everything in house, hmm. and uh, we definitely pride ourselves on that experience. And um, we want to be able to have as much control over that that positive experience as we can. And, uh, you know, that's, that's led us to invest in our team and in, in the training of our team uh, so that we can, can have that experience be as, as strong as possible. 
Once again, listeners are talking to uh, Sean, Sean Foley. He is the founder of Rain or Shine Golf. You can go out to rainorshinegolf.com to learn a little bit more about all the packages that they offer. Obviously, one of the big questions, Sean, is sustainability. As we get into 2021, you know, the golf season, we're, we are talking the week of the Masters at the time of this recording. <laughs> it's always the most busiest time, at least it is for Golf and Filtered as well. What are your plans? What's the goal? What's the approach that Rain or Shine is taking to kind of sustain that golf boom that we saw last year? Yeah, you know, I, we don't expect to see the crazy surge that we saw in March and April of last year. Um, it's it's something that, you know, over time it will balance out. But there was a, a ridiculous surge that was pretty unprecedented last April. And mm -hmm. uh, we expect to see you know, not nearly as much volume as we saw last April, but at the same time, I, I really credit personally, a lot of the growth that golf has seen in general, not just indoor golf, uh, but golf in general to, you know, this shift in terms of working arrangement. Mm -hmm. And you know, it seems like the more and more people can work remotely and, you know, sneak out to the driving range for a conference call or, you know, take some putts while, while taking a work call or, you know, just getting out at four 30 and being on the golf course in five minutes. Um, I think that's extremely impactful for the amount of golf being played. And we've seen how much golf in general has grown over the course of the last year, uh, mm -hmm. just in terms of rounds played overall membership and uh, a number of different stats in that regard. Uh, but really it, we, we expect that, most of these new golfers, they're not going to be buying a golf simulator. They're not really going to be interested in that from day one. But over time, our success is somewhat dependent on, on golf in general. Mm -hmm. And the more that golf grows, the more you know sustainability that we see in our business. And that leads us to believe that you know there may be a slight decline from last spring mm -hmm. and you know the, the huge spike that COVID caused. Um, but long term, we think that it will be it will be good things just due to the overall golf growth that we've seen. No, and, that, and that's good to hear, too. I mean, uh, the points that you raise about working from home, being able to sneak out really quick, a lot faster than perhaps, you know, especially with the elimination of the commute home for a lot of people, myself included. I played the most golf I had in many years last year. So it was uh, definitely a blessing in disguise, a silver lining, so to speak. But right. at any rate. Uh, Sean, thanks so much for coming on today to talk to us a little bit about Rain or Shine Golf, and I hope that we keep in touch. And once again, folks, go out to rainorshinegolf.com. Take a look at everything they got. They got launch monitors, hitting bays, golf mats, putting greens, everything that you could possibly want for any budget in any space that you might work with, even a 90-something-year-old home like I do. So, uh, Sean, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me out.